When the World Cup was in Sweden, 1958, I was 10. The impact was Pelé. He was 17. And um, yeah, I was interested in football before that, playing, of course. But after that, it was it became a dream to be a, a player for the Swedish national team, of course. I think at that time, Pelé became a big hero for the whole world and Swedish people as well, of course. But there were great players in, in the Swedish national team, like Gunnar Nordahl, Gunnar Gren, Nils Lidholm. So I think most young boys my age, they, they had a dream to be like them, because they were the first Swedish players who became professional outside Sweden, and they moved to Italy. I always dreamt about to be professional outside Sweden and to play for the national team and play in the first division, like uh, Premier League in Sweden. Uh, I didn't reach none of them as a player. So when I was 27, I played in second division. And then my friend, my uh, maestro, Tord Grip, told me that uh, he thought it's better that I finish playing and start to become a coach. So I started as his assistant uh, manager in a um, third division team in Sweden. At that time, uh, English football was very Im important and very popular in Sweden. We could, since 40 years back or something like that, look at English football uh, in television every Saturday afternoon and half the Swedish population was sitting there. That was a highlight of the week to see a game. And if you look back uh, many years, the pitches were bad, it was raining, the ball was heavy. So it was a lot of kick it long and uh, a fight. Today it's different, of course, and the pitches are always good today. But um, Swedish people are born more with English football than with Swedish football, I would guess. So when I later, as a coach, presented the idea to play 4-4-2, instead of playing with a sweeper and marking, uh, it was easy to introduce it because most of English football was uh, playing four in the back line and so on. Um, it was new in Sweden, but it was not new in England. It was a young team and then when I took over in Gothenburg, 79 I think it was, uh, Bob Horton and Roy Hodgson, they were already in Sweden and did very well with the system 442. So it was not that uh, difficult and I had a young hungry team in Gothenburg. I was in Gothenburg three and a half years and uh, we did more or less the same thing every training session. We trained how to play exactly. Uh, in the beginning I was walking with the players. You stand there, you stand there and things like that. So we bought some new players, thought we should be a little bit successful in Europe. We couldn't dream about winning the U UEFA Cup as we did 1982. So it was a big surprise and for many of the players it was uh, a new start in life. Many of them became professional and the coach, myself, I became, uh, I got the opportunity to leave Sweden and be a full professional uh, coach outside. I got the opportunity to uh, to be the coach manager of Benfica and I took that. And it was a big step, of course, because I never been outside Sweden coaching. But the biggest step was from third division to the first division in Sweden some years before. So when I came to Benfica, I thought I will try to do the same thing here as I did in Gothenburg and it worked. I was very lucky because Benfica came from a, a bad years, not winning many trophies. or And Benfica is such a big club in Portugal and in, in Europe uh, that they have to win. If you don't win with Benfica, it's a failure. It's, second is, is nothing. 
So the players listened to me and my ideas, which were completely new for them, how to train, how to play, uh, and things like that. And mentality also. When you play away, you go for to win. You don't go there to defend and happy with a draw. So they listened to me, and it yeah, it was good. We had uh, two seasons, my first spell in Benfica, and we won the league twice, won the cup. We went to final in UEFA Cup, so it was very, very good. With the results in Benfica, I got offers from, uh, from other clubs. And at that time, Italian football was probably the best in Europe, maybe the best in the world, the best league. All the best players went there. So when I got that offer just from Italy, I took it. And the reason I got that offer was that Benfica has knocked out uh, Roma from UEFA Cup in quarterfinal the year before. So when I got it, I decided that uh, it's time to move and uh, Roma. I came to a, a good team, but an old team. They had, uh, had big success with Nils Lidon, Swedish coach. And the year before I came there, they won the league and they played uh, final in the uh, Champions League. They lost against Liverpool on penalties at the stadium in Rome, Olympic Stadium. So it was a team full of success, full of great players, the names. They felt like they were kings of Rome. And I came there with some other ideas. I wanted them to run more. And I struggled in the beginning. The whole first year, I struggled a lot. So sometimes I thought, was it the right move to go to, to Italy or not? But after a while, we got some new, fresh players, young. And uh, my second year was very, very good in Rome. and. Uh, it changed, but it was difficult in the beginning. When I was in Benfica, before I accepted to go to Rome, uh, they phoned me from Barcelona and said, don't go to Rome, come to us. Because when you come to Italy, you cannot sit on the bench. Because it was forbidden for foreign coaches to sit on the bench. And that happened. I was sitting on the stands for one year and that was difficult and uh, the team played badly. I couldn't do anything from the stands. I was not allowed to go into the dressing room in halftime. It was not an ideal situation. But after a year, it became better. I learned a lot when I came there. And if you want to play my style of football, you cannot have old players uh, and famous players which are not willing to do the job both ways, not only attacking, also defending, but really defending even if you're a striker, because that was and is my philosophy. And today it's normal, but at that time it was not. A striker is a striker, a striker shall score goals. Defending, well, it's up to the others. So I, that was the reason, and I learned to myself, I said, Sven, if you want to play that in the future, get the right players, in other way, waste of time. After three, five years in Italy, uh, the last two years in Fiorentina, I had only won one title. And I came from Gothenburg and Benfica and winning titles every year. So I thought, uh, when Benfica came and asked me if I wanted to come back, I thought, I go back, I will win titles again, <clears throat> for sure, because Benfica is Benfica. So that was the main reason. And I could have stayed in Fiorentina, but Fiorentina was at that time a team with ambitions to be in the middle on the table, not ambitions to, to win anything, ambitions not to go down. And um, at that time, I was not used to that, so I preferred to go back. I came back to Benfica and some things had changed. I, I was away for five years and come back and there were a lot of new players. 
but good players and we won the league I think uh, once and we played the final in, in Champions League against Milan probably the best team in Europe maybe in the world at that time club team a lot of famous players like the three Dutch uh, Gullit, uh, Van Basten, Rijkaard only uh, they were incredible 195, 190, quick, good technique, strong, very good football players. And all the rest of Milan. We reached the final uh, and played them in uh, Austria, in Vienna. It was a poor game. Uh, Milan was not at their best. And we, we didn't have the strikers to break down the defenders in Milan. Costa Corta, Baresi, Maldini. And I had a Brazilian one and a Swedish striker. And we were not strong and we were not quick enough to come in behind them. We might have had one chance to score in 90 minutes. But we defended very well against them. And they had only one chance to score. But they scored and won 1 0. It was a pity, but uh, I know that we lost against probably the best team in, in Europe at that time. I left Benfica again after three years because I got an offer from Sampdoria uh, in Genoa, Italy again. And the reason why I came there was that uh, Mancini and Vialli at that time, Gianluca Vialli, had got in their heads that they wanted me as a coach. I don't think it was the chairman, the owner, who wanted me. It was these two players. So I signed and still Italian football, the best uh, in, in, in the world. I signed for them and then I should start working some months uh, later. And the chairman of Sampdoria phoned me and said, I cannot compete any longer with Milan, Juventus and Inter. I have to start to sell players. So tomorrow we said, unfortunately, Sven, I'm going to sell Vialli to Juventus. And that's what he did. And he said, if you want to come, you're more than welcome. If you want to change your mind, you are free to do that. But I went there and there were five very lucky years. Sampdoria was like a family club. I think we won only one title, the Italian Cup in five years, but we were second, third in the league. And we had some really good players, and uh, I liked that time. I was in uh, Sampdoria for five years, and after these five years, I thought, and the club thought as well, it's time so to, to move. So then it became Lazio, and I was there for three years. I think we won seven titles, something like that, and uh, very good, excellent. And the chairman was brilliant. He did almost everything I asked him to do. <laughs> we bought fantastic players and we got uh, a super team and we won a lot. So it was a uh, good time and uh, I always remember that time in my career. I changed some uh, players who'd been there for a long time and didn't have the right mentality, I thought. Beppe Signori was one of them. He was a captain, he was the best goal scorer. He played for the national team. But he's been there for many years without any success and he was, he was not positive. I went to the chairman one day and said, uh, we have to sell Signori. And I thought he got a heart attack. He said, no, <laughs> you're, you're joking, Sven, he said. That's not possible. He's our captain and best player. He's a king in this city uh, amongst the fans. Yeah, but I said, he's not the right one if we want to win trophies. And I think it took a couple of weeks and I every day was on him, selling, selling. Suddenly he did it and the fans got absolutely crazy. They hated me. They wanted to kill me, I think. <laughs> and we sold him uh, Thursday, Friday. Sunday we had Udinese at home and we lost that game. Whew. Hard times. <laughs> So, next training, we, I couldn't come into the training ground because it was blocked by supporters. No training. The police were there, but they couldn't handle the situation. The fans had climbed over the walls and 
invaded the training pitch, so no training. They were sitting on my Volvo, banging. Mm. He didn't think we should win, and I could win anything. <clears throat> so I wanted to change him and some other players. And took in fantastic players like Beron, like Mihailovic, uh, Mancini, great players. And it became a winning team. Some month later, uh, or say half a year later, we won the first trophy. And uh, after that, we won six more. And no one uh, said anything about Signore anymore. They still remember him in Lazio because he was a great player. But no one told me we should have kept him anymore. We were a lot of points after Juventus. Uh, and I, but I still said to the players, we can win this. I don't know how many players thought it was possible. The owner, he said, Sven, it's, it's gone again. No, I said, we can still win it. And uh, we started to play from good football to brilliant football. And I think we played a lot of games without losing any games and just went one way, win after win after win. And Juventus started to struggle a little bit. So we took in everything and everything was decided last game. Our game was finished. We won it and uh, we would be champion if Juventus didn't win in Perugia. And in halftime, Perugia Juventus, it was raining so heavily. So the game was uh, delayed almost for one hour. And at that game, Colina was a referee. Colina, a great referee. And Juventus, they said, because they were losing 1 0, Juventus said, new game, another day. And Colina was strong. I think any other referee would have said OK to Juventus another day. Colina said, we wait. And they did. And uh, we were listening to the, that game in Rady from our dressing room. And they couldn't score, so we were the champions. Strange way, but uh, beautiful. Beautiful day. We had so many players who could be uh, who could win a game for themselves. And uh, for example, we had a defender, a central defender, who could win the game, Mihailovic. Just give him a free kick. Well, he had at that time the best left foot in the world. Then, of course, players like Nedved, Mancini, Veron, Salas, uh, of course. But anyone could score a goal there. And they did. And above all, it was a team with not one leader. It was a team with 11 leaders, all of them. And if you take what they're doing today, Mancini is a great coach, Diego Simeone, great coach. I had him as a midfielder. Almeida, great coach. Nesta been a coach as well. So fantastic. And you could see that. And they were all winners. And they believed we can do it, we can win. We won the league on Sunday. And I think it was Wednesday after, it was a final in the Italian Cup. And we played Inter away with Lippi. And I remember I was speaking to Lippi and Lippi said, now you've been winning everything, let us win. I said, I'm sure you will win because we haven't really prepared the game because it's, everything is crazy. But I remember in the day before in dressing room, I said, if you are professional, you go out and you go out fighting. And they did, and we won. And I think that was a really winning mentality. They came out there, we're going to have that trophy as well. And um, from what I took over there, they didn't have any winning mentality. It became in these years, and that was beautiful. I appreciate that win more than the league, because the way they did it. In football, we talk a lot about formation, 4-4-2, four, 3-5-2, four, whatever, whatever it is. 
four in the back line, three in the back line, two strikers, three strikers, one striker. And that's going on for ever, I would say. And for me, when I started as a coach, the system was everything. 4-4-2 four, four, with Gothenburg. If it's 1-0 for my team, five minutes to go, a striker injured, I took him out, of course, and put in a new striker. Never a midfielder. So the system was, for me, absolutely the most important. By the time I moved outside Sweden, <clears throat> had big, famous players, I started to change a little. System is always important, but the players are the most important. So if you have really good football players, make the system for them, not the oppo uh, opposite. Because if you have players like Veron, like Mancini, to press, to be very aggressive, it's not their way. So you can't really expect them to do that. So if you stick to the system very, very aggressive and so on, you can't take these kind of players. But these two, they win football games for you, for sure, every day, <laughs> more or less. So by the time I thought, I have to get the players I want, and after that, I do the system which suits them. I was in Lazio and I was going to a mini holiday, or I was at a mini holiday because it was a national team playing. And of course, club teams, they had two, three days off. I got a phone call from England, from Old Wembley, a man called Ethel Still. He said, I'm at Wembley, I just saw England losing against Germany, 1-0 qualification game for the World Cup 2002 and he said would you be interested in uh, taking the England job I said you're joking at all you know that's not possible at all well you can always try he said I'm here with uh, Adam Crucier and David Dean who was uh, one of the uh, the Arsenal guy of course but he was also in the on the board in the national team and Keegan has just resigned well, I, I, I didn't goodbye and but one two days later, Adam Crusier phoned me and asked, "Are you interested to take over that job?" <laughs> yeah, I said, "Of course I would be that, even if I had Lazio." But England is, I mean, it's the biggest you can you can have, probably the best football job, the most famous and the biggest you can have. When you have players, you can see that they're technically very good, some of the players. Um, and if you take big players I had, take one today, for example, Frank Lampard, technically very good. Even Steven Gerrard, technically very good. Uh, in Italy, Ancelotti, I had him for three years in Roma. I made him captain. And you could understand that uh, very nice guy, very seriously, extremely professional, always interested, asking me, why did we do that on training? What are we going to do tomorrow? And things like that. So you could understand, he will be a, a coach. And he became a very good coach. The same with Mancini. I think Mancini was a coach even when he was a player. He coached on the pitch, he told the players what to do and what not to do. So sometimes you can understand that uh, Diego Simeone, tactically extremely good. But sometimes I'm surprised I had um, some other players who got uh, famous coaches. Sergio Concesao, I had in Lazio. He became a very good coach in Porto. If you had asked me when he was a player, I wouldn't have no chance, I would say. But here you are. Thank you.